I just downloaded Windows 7, Release Candidate 1, and it is set to dual boot on my MacBook. So far I like it a lot. Um, one of the things that they have included it was a full screen magnifier. Uh, those of you who have watched my Macintosh videos, like um, how to make your Macintosh say the time on the hour, uh, something along those lines, I don't remember the title offhand, you'll notice that I used magnification in that video. I need magnification in order to be able to see. Windows for a long time has been behind in terms of offering it out of the box. Um, and now they have. Um, so, for low vision users, um, you know, this is a real, this is a real breakthrough. It might even save some of us 500 bucks. Now, a lot of people are going to say, hey, we had the full screen magnifier first. Apple, you know, was first in this and that and the other. It's true Apple has had a lot of innovation in the sighted world. But for those of us who can barely see or worse, not even see at all, Windows actually was first. Our access technology has been on the Windows platform for 20 years, over 20 years in fact. The Macintosh accessibility really didn't catch on until, and I mean truly catch on as an alternative to Windows, until the year 2003 for low vision, and for those of us with total blindness, 2005. So it's only been around for, for the screen reader users, it's only been around for four years. For the low vision users, it's been around for six. Now... Why is our access technology Windows-centric? Well, up front, a Windows computer costs quite a bit less than a Macintosh, even though the overall Macintosh ownership cost is quite a bit less. The trouble is, 70% of the community of people who are visually challenged are unemployed. Okay, I am not kidding. 70% of us are unemployed living off of Social Security. And when you're living off of funds like that, um, you know, upfront cost is much, much more important than total ownership cost. I mean, sure, I'm glad we would all love to have something as robust as a Mac and the ability to dual boot Windows so we can do our work and our play, you know, keep them separate and keep them secure. $1,000 for a computer is just not feasible for a lot of people. And if you're going through the agencies, there are agencies that cater to uh, people with visual challenges, uh, basically rehabilitation agencies. Those agencies are not for profit. And as such, they also need to be, keep a very, very close eye on the pocketbook. Up front, a Windows computer just costs less. And also, what is used in the work environment? For the most part, Windows. And nowadays, if you don't know computer skills, you can't get your work done. So it's much, it makes a lot more sense to design assistive technology around the operating system that everybody uses for both work and play. And that is Windows. Now, I've cited upfront cost, I've cited seniority of the Windows operating system, I've cited the fact that it was in the workplace, I've cited the fact that, um, you know, everybody uses it so it makes more sense to develop for it in terms of the AT industry. So where does the Mac stand on this? Well, they actually have innovated in one, in a, in a couple fields. When they did get around to building a screen reader, they they included it with their operating system free of charge. Okay, a lot of times with, with Windows, the access technology has been there for the past 20 years, but it's always um, needed to be purchased. True, as truly usable assistive technology needs to be purchased from specialized manufacturers who 
Um, excuse me. Who really truly understand this type of technology. Apple has also innovated in the area where you can have pretty much any dis braille display you have on the market work for you. Apple has also innovated in the area of having um, the ability to run Windows on their system so you can go do both work and play. So a lot of things, a lot of, um, there are a lot of reasons that are compelling to perhaps maybe take out an extra couple of months salary on the purchase of a Mac. There are some pitfalls, though, and I think accessibility is a pitfall as much as it is an innovation. A lot of the third-party applications just don't work with the Macintosh. The reason is because the Apple screen reader voiceover is built into the operating system. It's literally part of the operating system. So some third-party applications just won't work unless they are properly developed. And unfortunately on the Macintosh, while there are certainly a fair handful of them, um, not, it's, it's just not as accessible. And um, I'm not trying to bash the Macintosh. I'm a Macintosh user myself. I love my Mac. But let's put it this way. Firefox works with JAWS and window eyes out of the box. Okay, you put in you put in JAWS and window eyes, you get immediate access to Firefox. This is on the Windows side. On the Macintosh side, you don't get access to Firefox at all unless you install a third-party plugin called Firevox. V-O-X, F-I-R-E-V-O-X. I installed Firevox, and I'm sad to say that the command structure is counterintuitive to that of voiceover. You pretty much have to learn to drive your web browser separate from the way you drive your computer. And that's a bit of a, a downside if you prefer to use Firefox over Safari. Um, what else is inaccessible? Um, Microsoft Office 2003, I have not found any, um, I just haven't found good luck w with it. But I think the biggest problem that the Macintosh has is lack of experience. And let me explain. Screen reader development is very serious work. And it is just better to go with... With, when this technology can literally mean the difference between employment and unemployment for you, it's much better to go with a company that has, with a platform that has experience. And screen reading has been in the Windows world for 20 years. Uh, the Macintosh, like I said, it has picked up, but the, the experience just isn't there. It's a very young screen reader. In fact, when, it, when VoiceOver was first introduced in Tiger, it was horrible compared to JAWS. Absolutely horrible. Uh, they completely turned it around in Leopard. I think they did a good job, but I still think there's a major, there's a long way to go. Some of the commands in um, VoiceOver are more straightforward, but at the same time they're more confusing because you have to hold down, for example, Control Option Command, and then I, for example, to initiate a command. That just seems you know, versus insert F7 on Windows to do the same command, just as an example, okay? And, um, you know, it's just... What I'm trying to say is the other big downer to voiceover is the learning curve. So the downers to voiceover are the lack of experience, lack of compatibility in some cases, and the learning curve, and the pluses on, on which are innovation for braille display and built-in screen reader. And on the Windows side, it's experience 20 years in the industry, um, everybody uses it, so you're bound to find everything for it. You use it in work, so it's better to, to program the AT for it in for an operating system that everybody uses. So that's pretty much Mac versus PC in the assistive technology industry. Um, if there's anything that I'm missing, please feel free to point it out. I, I, I open the criticism, constructive criticism. Thank you for watching, and have a nice evening.